My name is Janelle Codiani. I am the executive director of ATAC, Downtown Arts and Music, formerly known as Amazing Things Arts Center. Usually we are in Framingham. Today we are in Providence from, and from wherever you are coming to you through the internet. Um, I want to take a quick moment to just give you some information about our venue. Obviously, we are closed due to COVID. Um, but we still have programming going on. We have feature shows. We have this series, uh, which I'm particularly excited about, where artists share um, some kind of their process. And we've had all different uh, people. And they can you can see all of the former talks also on our Facebook page under videos. They're all living there. Uh, and I really recommend you check them out. They're, they're great, as you will see tonight. Um, we have music going on. We just today announced a call for work for a video mixtape. Uh, so if you have short video pieces, whether they be a singular story or song, uh, comedy, uh, stop motion animation, any, any kind of video work, we are going to be putting together regular mixtapes. Um, and it's called Super Fun Mixtape. And I'm very, very excited about it. So if you or you know anybody that might have worked for that, please check it out on our website at atac160.org slash mixtape. Um, other than that, keep your local arts places alive, check out the websites, become a member. Um, and I am very, very available via email. So if you have any questions, please um, send one over to us. I'd love to, I'd love to answer them or have a conversation with you about art and programming. So tonight, um, you are here for this process talk with Stephanie. You know that part already, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about how it works. Um, Stephanie is going to give you a talk, and then you are also able to ask questions during or after. You can unmute yourself and say, excuse me, just like a student and ask a question. Or if you feel shy or it's a little bit too complicated for you, you can pop them in the chat and I will relay them. Um, to those of you who are watching from Facebook, I will keep an eye on the Facebook chat as well. So if anybody sees me with my face down looking at my phone, I'm not bored. I'm just making sure that those people are also included. Uh, so you can put questions or comments in that chat as well and I'll bring them into this space here. Um, other than that, I think that's it. I think that's everything I need to tell you. Thank you so, so much for being here on the snowy snow day that I don't know, my children didn't get. Um, but I really appreciate seeing everybody and all of your lovely faces. And with that, Stephanie, take it away. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. This is so nice to see everyone here. I miss you all. Yeah. Um, so um, what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about what I've done um, since March, which really changed things, not just for me, but for everybody. And um, it's, Zoom has been a lifesaver. You know, it's really a nice way to connect with people and um, travel long distances without really traveling. It's magic, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do is share my screen, but you uh, please, as I tell my students, please just interrupt me because uh, you might have questions. Um, I like it when people interrupt me because then I know I'm just not like talking into the void. Yeah. All right. Um, also, I, I feel a little more, more comfortable when I'm showing something rather than having people stare at me. So. <laughs> All right, here goes. All right, I didn't ask if there were any children, um, but there's, there's, not, there's just one kind of racy image, but I don't know, it's not really a nude. Um, all right, so I, after the pandemic hit, uh, I really thought a lot about why I was making art, because right, right when the pandemic hit, I got rejected from a show, um, and I'm going to show you the work that was rejected. Um, uh, and I just thought, you know, this is an online show. How much trouble is it to put up one more piece? You know, um, but I'm used to a lot of rejections. It's just I thought, that's crazy. Why, why would any get, anyone get rejected from this? But um, this, this piece will be in an exhibition called Vigenda, which Christine Hajosi is, is putting together. And this is called All Dolled Up. It's a Coptic book. Uh, it has this kind of braided stitching along the outside. And I used um, nylons, which I don't actually wear anymore. So I recycled them into art. Um, 
and on the inside it, I used. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh oh, that was scary. <laughs> um, I used make my old makeup, which I'm also not using very much anymore. Um, so I used all like all the foundation and all the lipstick for the inside. And so it alters between um, horizontal lips and uh, vertical lips. And I, I used uh, false eyelashes for this, which I don't actually wear, but I did purchase some. Um, and those things are expensive. Um, here's another piece that I made specifically in response to, uh, to the virus. And I thought I would look at some other pretty viruses. And here's, here's some other ones. Um, here's, here's rabies, chicken pox, Zika, and of course, COVID, our virus of the year. Um, my theme for the year has been recycling old things. So, uh, and experimentation. We're almost going on a year now. So I've been cutting up my old prints and just printing over them, printing over them until I get a surface that looks like, um, it, it's very layered, but it's kind of, it's um, non-representational and then I'm layering things on top of it. Um, Stephanie, so, uh, can you make the, the screen, uh, the images bigger? Um, well, I want to be able to zoom in like this. Oh, okay. So why don't you minimize your, uh, your list of people, then you maybe you could see it a little bit better. Okay. Um, if you want to see these things, um, I can go in closer like this. Great. Okay. Um, so I, I teach the students at Walnut Hill how to make little chunky books, little chunky Coptic books. Um, it's a way that they can make sketchbooks that are manageable. They carry, they're like pocket sketchbooks that they carry around with them. So this is where it's folded right here. Um, and it, it, when you're teaching book binding, it's always, it's always a challenge to get people to fill the books because they make these pretty things and then they don't want to fill them. So what I try to teach people to do is to work on the book from the inside out. So uh, here's the third book that I made uh, in March. It's called Hope and Despair. Uh, and it has, uh, it has embossed pages, as you can see right here. Uh, embossed, pierced, and slotted, and then I put feathers in it. So this kind of book is called a dosa dose because it, it has two books kind of back to back. All right, so um, I wanted to show you my work first and then I will show you about the other things that I've done uh, because really teaching, I, I really focused on teaching because it's been such a pleasure to meet with the students. It really uh, fulfills uh, those needs that I have for connection and creativity, sharing time with people, making art. It's just been really special. So this, I made this book to show and also for fun for myself, but I was teaching a book class at MassArt um, called exploring the fold. So this, this kind of book, it's, it's called a star book or an origami fold, but the pages are made out of squares that are folded and put together, kind of like those little fortune tellers we used to make. Um, I've been thinking a lot about sheep and ants during this political season. I feel like we're either one or the other. Uh, I just feel like these numbers are so astronomical. I can't really think about them in any other term, uh, any other way, except that we're kind of like bugs, you know? We're just, we're so little and, and um, there's so many of us. All right, so this is another book, uh, Insects and Ants. This is also made with the square pieces of paper that are folded and, and put together. So this is, this looks very complicated. I like to teach this to students because it's really very simple to make technically, but then to fill it with images that are meaningful and make sense with the structure is a little bit more challenging. Um, so I've been doing a lot of experiments because I've been teaching jelly printing, mono printing online. So I had to kind of teach myself how to use that. So here's some, here's some mono prints that I made 
Um, Marie, how is this? Are you able to see things when I make them this big? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just enthralled. I, 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 I'm loving what I'm seeing. Really, really interesting work. Oh, thanks. Good. So yeah, ants, ants are fun. They're, <laughs> they're little and they're really easy to draw. <laughs> also, they're just like graphically really, they're kind of cute, you know? Um, all right, so I've been experimenting with some other book forms. There's a carousel book that has three layers of accordions and I was trying to make one that was curved and had pop-ups in it and also used up some nice pieces of paper that I'd monoprinted over and I just, you know, I make these things and I don't know what to do with them. I've been trying to have an additive process rather than preconceived. So I've been experimenting with process, making stuff, then seeing how it comes together. Here's, here's another example of that. I think I'll stitch these in. Uh, here's another experiment with the monoprints, layered monoprints uh, with ladybugs, also graphically very pleasing and easy to draw. They tend to also gather like in big clumps. How did you draw the, how did you make the ladybugs, Stephanie? The ladybugs, well, I took the prints and then I painted I guess I went over them with um, some India ink and just made lots of little um, ellipse shapes with the head and the legs antenna and some dots and colored them in with gouache, which is semi-opaque in this case. It's wonderful. Uh, this one I'm kind of excited about not, I, I'm excited about the structure because it's a variation on a tunnel book in case any of you have made tunnel books, but um, it this one is made, uh, I designed it so it can fold flat and it doesn't have accordion hinges. I think it's not very attractive, but I like the way it moves. So here goes. Mm. Oh my goodness. That's very clever. Mm. So I, now I have to make one that looks good. Like the structure's, <laughs> the structure's cool, but uh, yeah. Mm. All right. Some more experiments. As I told you, I, like, I don't know how I feel about these, but you'll see where these images came from in a minute. Um, I've been meeting with two different artist groups online, uh, Tuesday Art and Saturday Art. Um, and it gives me lots of time to talk and listen and make art with people. Some of those people are in this group. So thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm. um, so so those, that was uh, a sequence of how I got to these. Then I cut them apart and applied them to wooden panels. Uh, so, um, so some people who have been getting the Find It series that I did this summer might remember this image. Do you remember that? That was like goodbye to summer. Okay, so maybe you can see that and maybe you can find it in here. <laughs> I think there's the watermelon. Um, and then that one is the original of this module that I used for uh, another find it called the same difference. Stephanie, we have a, a question question That's in good. the chat. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca said, uh, you said you've been doing an additive process instead of preconceived. This sentence intrigues me. Can you tell me what you mean by additive? Does that mean no plan or something else? Uh, that means no plan. Um, and it means being willing to make mistakes. Like here's, okay, so I had, I started this, this particular corner was for a find it. I've been sending drawings to kids over the summer. Um, and I just started drawing and made some wacko stuff, wacko things that fit together that would have hidden drawings, then brought it into the computer and uh, manipulated it as I'll show you later. Um, because it's expensive watercolor paper, I used the rest of the paper to just doodle on. Um, 
and like trying things like painting into something that's wet and, and it looks really blurry. And whereas this is really focused and defined and uh, it's like, what can I do to change that? So it doesn't look like ants carrying a watermelon. Uh, and then I thought, okay, there's four separate ones. What can I do to unify them? So I did this and then I thought, that's really, I don't know, is it ugly? I don't know. Um, and I, it's becoming harder and harder for me to figure out what's ugly and what's beautiful. Um, so I just kept doing something and then uh, I covered wooden panels and I thought these could be really fun to play with and rearrange. Um, and I, I maybe will give them to someone. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but then, then um, after that, I took some pieces of paper that I had also lying around my studio, like some unsuccessful screen prints and some mono prints that I liked, but they didn't have a focal point. So I thought, oh, I'm, and Angela, I think you're gonna see this one because <laughs> I sent it to John's parents. I sent these to John's parents. Um, I hope they're not on the, are they? I, I don't know. It's not a surprise if they're in this group. Uh, so anyhow, I just added some collage until I thought, wow, okay, like all of a sudden it pulled together and it looked like something that I might call art. Uh, but, it, but in terms of color, it looks a lot like that. So I don't know where the colors are coming from, but maybe just their wintry colors. Uh, all right, so I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit now about what I did with my students in March. So I'm, I'm ending the kind of the, like my art experimentation part and want to talk about what I did with the students online. Because uh, when we switched to online in March, it was incredibly difficult because many of my students were uh, quarantined in China uh, and they didn't have supplies. So what to do with students that you're teaching online who have no supplies? Uh, so I decided they could do pencil rubbings. Um, and on post-its or little pieces of paper. But I wanted to give them a sample of what I was thinking of, just to give them a visual. So I went around the house and did some pencil rubbings, then changed them. Here's, here's what they looked like. Uh, I put them in my front door. So the assignment was to go around your house and uh, Think of your environment as like a tactile environment. What, what if you were blind, what could you feel? And then take a rubbing of that. Um, and they had to make 50 of them because then they could do an installation. So this, they were also supposed to do a self-portrait. So here's like, you can see me a little bit back there. So I did a number of different installations just to show them what I was talking about. Mm. So. This one, I left the sound in. This one. So having having the post its was, was kind of fun. I always like post its. They're, they're all over the wall now with little notes all over them. Um, so this is one of what my students did. Um, some pretty nice. Frottage, that's the fancy art, art word for rubbings. Um, and we talked about whether you wanted to fill up the whole space or whether you wanted to have like a directional mark like that, um, whether you wanted them to be light or dark, things like that. Um, so they really did have some choices even though they were making uh, these post-its. Oh, am I, am I, I'm not talking too long, am I? Not no, yet. Great. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> um, so here that so those were Talia's post-its, and then here's her here's her installation that she did, and you can see like she's in the she's back there. She makes a little peace sign there, and she's put them in the window. And I really like how she's played with the reflection. Like obviously she's inside. We're seeing what's inside. We're seeing through the window, um, we're seeing the grid and then uh, the post-its. Just really, uh, I thought it was pretty interesting what she did. Um, here's another one, Analia did this. Uh, so here's her self-portrait, which she's added 
some like rubbings, like Photoshop type rubbings in the background. So she made this beautiful, uh, beautiful quilt like blanket of post-its and then here she is using it uh, as a blanket. I just thought that was so uh, kind of eloquent. Um, Jackie did a very innovative uh, design with her post-its, transforming the window into something that looks like maybe it's a condemned building and then she put them all over her face. Um, I said, it's kind of like a Blair Witch project, isn't it? And she said, exactly. So she, that, was, that was her thing. She's like creating her own drama. Uh, here's another beautiful one that Michelle did. Uh, has the, um, the well, I, I say yin and yang, but I think it's yin and ang, according to my friends who are from China. Um, and so here, here they are, and she's magically between these floating post-its and the window. She's like she's existing in the space between. So it, she said they're on a piece of glass, but I, I loved how she made this, this un, unimaginable space with them and put herself in that space. Here's a, a beautiful set by Cindy who made some blossoms. She did actually quite a number of installations. I just showed these few because they're all the flowers, but she, she did um, some other ones too, which were very interesting. Um, really brightened up the, the campus as you can see. So I felt like that was a really successful project. I was really excited about it, um, but then there was more time, what else to do? Um, more ways of making prints without using a press at home with no materials. So uh, I thought how the mark of the hand becomes more and more important these days, especially we're spending so much time on, on computers and on these screens away from the tactile world. So I really, back to basics was the theme for that semester. So I wanted the students to take a print somehow using their hands. Uh, so here, here's Jackie's. She want, was trying for an effect of soot and steam. And then I told them that they could either print the images or they could manipulate them in Photoshop. But the idea was to uh, use radial symmetry and create like a mandala-like form. So hers also looks like a camera lens or maybe the, mm -hmm. the lens of the eye it has this nice rotational quality to it. Um, Holden, his is very physical. He did a rubbing, an actual rubbing of his keyboard, and then he changed it into a Star of David. It's beautiful. Analia did a, a, a handprint and then turned it into a sun. Uh, Okay, so then I also was teaching another class, the book class. So you, you think it would be a little easier to do books because they just they're just using like paper and 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 pencil, and they made some amazing books. So there's a certain book called an ox plow, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do that in, in a minute. It's very it's pretty simple. Um, but Emily did the inside of a plane. So I I want to what what I challenged them to do was take something from their lives, some personal moment, a sequence of images that told a story about what they were doing at the end of March. Um, so many of them were traveling. Here they are. Here Emily is on the plane. Uh, this one's a beautiful drawing, just a really great sense of space and melancholy like there's this empty space over here. Um, and she's got the date on it too. Uh, Michael, he's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> like, like those little guys waiting for the airplane. <laughs> like little, this little one right down here is like baby Yoda or something. And then he also put a mask on the plane. <laughs> so that was, that was um, in this particular style, I wanted them to make a poster on one side and then have six to eight images 
on the other side. And here's, I just put one of the images in, it shows him boarding the plane. Uh, they had another project, the book students, where they, they get sentences from the creative writing students, and then they illustrate them and give a copy of the book to the creative writers. We weren't able to do that this time, but we did send pictures uh, of the images uh, to the writers. So this one says, uh, my new home, uh, a chair is my new home, but I long for my bed's blanket. Um, and I just think the design is really good. She's got this um, kind of throne-like arch here, repeated by this arch, and then the reaching hand, and then this reaching hand here, the blanket that's like almost a snake pulling her out of her chair. Uh, it just really gets, captures the feeling that we had during that time. Um, all right, so it wasn't enough that we had the pandemic then. As you all know, we had uh, just political, just terrible things happening in our country. Um, so I was very affected in particular by Breonna Taylor's death, her murder. Um, and I wanted to do something, but we were in lockdown at that time. We were in, um, I guess you could call it sheltering in place or quarantine. Um, we weren't sick, so it wasn't necessarily quarantine, but we. Uh, we were getting this news, just all this terrible news and where to, what to do with it, um, how, to, how to act, how to take action. So um, what I did is I, I made a poster for my front door. Um, and, and some of you, I guess many of you are artists and you might, have, might know how to do this, but what I did is I, am, I just am putting this in for the people who don't make art. Um, I enlarged with a grid system. I enlarged and copied from her photograph uh, using a grid system because I wanted it to really look like a portrait. Then I've shaded it in block by block and then I used India ink um, and cross hatching it. Oh, I guess this is the ink. See, yeah, the other was pencil, but you can see the cross hatching is uh, much more, more defined. Um, and so this is still in my front door. I took down the post-its and put this up. Um, and I put up these other posters all in my front windows because I wanted, I wanted my front door and my windows to be a gallery and uh, a place that announced to the rest of the world that this is how we feel right now. And I want you to be able to exercise on the streets and feel comfortable that you can run without getting shot, <laughs> you know? I mean, that seems like a really simple thing to do. And I, um, like, why can't someone just exercise with freedom? Um, so I wanted to be living in a place where that could, that could happen. Um, so, and I feel like people would come by and they'd, you know, they'd be walking by or running by and they'd see the, the posters and, and they would comment and they'd point at them. And um, I just felt like this is good. You know, I, um, it was something that I could do. Um, um, Becca, Becca, who might be here, I'm not sure she might be popping in and out. Um, her mom invited me. Hi. Hi, Becca. Hi, Becca. <laughs> Your amazing mom invited me to be part of uh, a STEAM project science, technology, engineering, and art. Um, and she said, well, our goal is to challenge and engage the students in a week-long workshop. These are children from like five to, I don't know, 13 maybe, um, that focuses on social justice and illuminates some of the UN 17 guidelines for a sustainable future. I'm like, wow. And she said, oh, and you have two, two hours to work with the children. I'm Wow, I don't know if I can do that. Um, but really, the kids were amazing. They were, they loved it. Um, they were very energetic. And they wanted to make art, they wanted to talk. Um, they wanted to make things. So what I decided would be manageable would be the Oxpod book, which I was talking to you about before. Uh, so he, I wanted them to have a poster on one side. This is the sample I made for them. 
um, and a sequence of six pages and then this area here with the where the polar bear and the ice cube is about global warming like things are getting getting too hot people are getting thirsty we need to share the water uh, so here's the poster here's the six page sequence and the meanwhile is in the middle when you unfold it so that was a big challenge and I, I thought that was good. It was what I needed and I was surprised I could do it. Um, then I thought, what else is really hard to teach? And I thought Coptic binding, that's the hardest thing I could teach. So I gave some workshops. I think Jill is here, right? Jill made an amazing Coptic book. Hi. Hi, hi Jill. Thank hi, you for coming. Um, so that was that was good. I had students who were very, uh, very patient and also gave me some feedback on what could work better. So I learned how to make some step by step videos. And that has really been good for making art. Um, so after I learned how to make some short videos, like I think that's the key short videos. So then I had to think about what I would do in the fall. Um, how, how are we doing? Does anyone have any questions? Because no, I, I think feel like I'm talking too much. So interesting. Mm. Thanks, Kathy. You oh, were Catherine, good. thank you, Catherine. <laughs> so I, met, so I thought, uh, okay, we'll um, do some printmaking. We'll do jelly prints, because that's what I spent the summer doing. Um, so here's a, like a speeded up video, just like they have on YouTube. Make it look really easy and fast. Um, after this one speedy video, I, I didn't ever make any more speedy videos. It makes it look too easy. And I, I think it also makes people feel a little bit anxious. So um, here's the prints that I made in that video. And then it turned out I didn't know if students in China could get jelly plates, so I had to scrap that whole idea. But I taught a workshop and out of my studio uh, on Zoom to some people who were in the audience. Um, so that's really great. Here's some amazing prints that you made. Susan made this one, Lynn made that one, Catherine made this. So I, I just love how they're all different techniques, um, all different styles. So for those of you who don't know jelly printing, it's like mono printing, but it, it's also a little bit like uh, gelatin printing that they used in photography originally. So there's this surface, it's a plasticky gooey jelly-like, it's like jello uh, surface, a little bit harder than that. Um, and you roll ink onto it. You can use acrylic, you can use dyes, you can use printmaking ink, whatever, um, and then make these beautiful layered prints. Um, these are just some of the ones that George made. Um, he's, John, he's gone on to make some, uh, a really beautiful sequence of, of prints for is George, is that your grad program in, in Scotland? Um, and this one, I like this one by Chris. I like that she's uh, created like almost like a book-like positive and negative thing that's happening. It looks like a diptych. Uh, so I thought I'd give a little presentation on jelly printing. Here's the jelly block. Um, and I, the more I do this, the thinner ink I use. <laughs> That's one thing I've really, really learned. There's a lot of videos online about how to do this. They're, they tend to be about making memory books or, or like cards and things. But really, once you can print an image, you can do anything you want with it. I like this because it's fast, it's non-toxic, it's very easy to do, it's inexpensive. Uh, it works best on inexpensive paper, which is amazing for printmaking. So here's the Oxplow book that I was talking about. So you take 
a piece of paper and fold. There's many different versions, but this one you fold it into eighths. This relates directly to book binding because this is how pages are set on the press, like either in like an octavo or sesto or um, so for instance, the printers would set the type and then they would print eight pages all at once to make a signature. So although it doesn't look much like a book, it really does directly relate to book binding and book production. Stephanie, do you know where the name Oxplow comes from for this type well, of book? It, um, because it's it's kind of like plowing the fields, like going um, back and forth. Mm. Uh, there's other names for it, like some people call it like a tumble book, or um, yeah, Christina has another name for it. I can't remember what jigsaw. I'm not sure. Uh, and here's how here's how you fold it. So this is a a fun thing to do. Very easy out of one piece of paper. And what I like about it is that you can take a scrap print that didn't look very good um, and repurpose it. Mm -hmm. And it will have, it, it will be recomposed as you're designing it with rectangles. So that's fun to see something that was one image broken up into eight images. All right, so here's a few, a few experiments that are pretty pretty unsuccessful and ugly, but I, I wanna, this is about process. So part of process is being willing to make mistakes, being willing to do something that you don't know what the end result will be. Um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but usually people don't see those things. So here, this is actually a beautiful piece of paper that Deborah Klotz made for me. Uh, she's also in the audience, so thank you, Deb. Um, I thought it was time to try to do something with this and I, I did a, a rubbing on. Uh, oh, you're so welcome. I'll replace it. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's handmade paper, like so precious, but what to do with it? So I did a rubbing um, of some objects underneath and uh, like in a nice um, sea green Crayola crayon. And then I thought, oh, paint it with Sumi ink. So yeah, that's not too bad. Um, and, and then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. What I did find out was that the acrylic paint, the jelly prints, acted as a resist for the sumi ink as well. This is on the other side of it, so I could make two two different sides. So I still think, wow, that's ugly. But I think I need to figure out what uh, what beautiful means in art and what ugly means in art for me. Um, here's some other things. I was teaching pop-up online, which was really great fun and the students did some amazing things. Um, so I experimented while they were experimenting and came up with these modules. And I just, they're cool because they fold flat, uh, but I don't know what to do with them. Yeah, so they'll just be experiments for now. They just hang them in a room from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I think sometimes I tend to complicate things too much. Um, we have a, another question. Is, is, that, um, is the Oxplow book also called a meander book? Possibly, because there's, you can do eight, you can do 16, you can do 32. And the more you have, you can have very complicated um, ways of cutting and folding, but they're all still from one piece of paper. Uh, I'd like to keep it really simple for my students and have the complicated part be the conceptual mm -hmm. aspect that they bring to it. Um, so what has really been good for me is to work with uh, my friends in Saturday Art. Uh, my husband Chuck set this up um, and so we draw together on Saturdays. Um, so uh, I think Celia, I think I saw you in the list, right? Are you, are you joining us? Yes, hi. All right, so Celia and Ethan came up with this game. They told us about this game that they played that seemed like it was really fun. And I said, what is it called? And they didn't know. And they said, maybe it's the stapler game um, because they were drawing staplers. They, do you mind if I paraphrase what you said, Celia? Please. Okay, um, so 
she said, well, one of us will come up with a word and then say the word and we both draw that. And then we come up with another word and we draw that. Um, and I thought that sounds like fun. So we did that. Um, and personally, I gave myself another challenge, which was try to put those things on one piece of paper and make them into a unified drawing, which has been really fun because it leads to unexpected juxtapositions uh, like a porcupine. Like I wasn't sure, I guess, which was a porcupine. So I do two of them, but someone mentioned toast. So, okay, we got the porcupine eating toast. Someone mentioned an alligator. Someone mentioned an exercise mat uh, and a shelf. So I thought I'll put all these guys on a shelf. Here's another one that was really fun that we did on Saturday art during Saturday art. Um, and someone said, sofa stain and then when we shared all the drawings and we were looking at them someone said oh i thought you said self-esteem <laughs> <laughs> was like how do you draw self-esteem but also how do you draw sofa stain <laughs> so um so here's my take on all the things that were mentioned uh, and it well, just was just just been really fun to have these flights of fancy and try to put these things all together. This, someone also mentioned infinity, like I think that's what it was, or maybe it was Mercury. Oh, it was Mercury in retrograde. Yeah, for anyone who uh, knows about, what was it, Daryl Martini? Cosmic Muffin, WBCN. Yeah, some of you might remember that. Um, all right, so uh, then we got a little more sophisticated and Chuck had an idea that we could draw on the whiteboard on Zoom. So here are the members, there's other members, but these are the people that I know a little bit better and also the people who are coming during the summer. So uh, this is us, here we are, all drawing together. There's Celia, there's Amy, she's also here. Hi, Amy. Um, Hi. <laughs> and so, this is really fun, but also challenging because while you're drawing in your little corner, then somebody else is drawing in their little corner and then all of a sudden they're drawing on your drawing. So it's, it's you have to be flexible or aggressively defend your space. So here's, here's our first part of it. And this is what happened to it later. Mm. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't even know what my parts were, but I know that I really wanted that fishbone in there. Um, yeah. Well, you got it. <laughs> yeah. So this, those have been fun. There's always a, like an avocado and pizza. Those are good <laughs> things to draw. So then uh, Chuck had an idea. Let's illustrate Little Red Riding Hood. So uh, some of us were, were doing drawings and then putting them in Google Drive and we'd share them. Um, but what ended up being much more fun, like here's, here's some more individual ones that I did. Grandma's night table and the wolf trying on grandma's clothes. I just put these in a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. I love these. these. So they're just kind of, it, the story took a turn. <laughs> Uh, um, so I was also trying to learn how to use the digital tablet because I've been using this time to try, try new things, experimentation. So uh, here's a few drawings I did using the digital tablet. Uh, also trying to get a little more life into Little Red Riding Hood, make her more of an active protagonist. Uh, this is a drawing I particularly like. I'm, Amy, I think you did the, you did the lighting, right? I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we often saves, we, she saves our drawings by adding the light. Um, John McPartland did this wolf. I did the little red and her little virginal flower there. And I think that Brett, I don't know if Brett is with us, but I think Brett did this person lurking over there. But these are, these are what our drawings usually end up looking like, something very surreal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 
Amy uh, put in, she was able to magically insert our other drawings into this one. Uh, I think Chuck, you did the wolf, right? Did you do the wolf or did John do the wolf? Maybe, I don't, everybody was drawing everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I do remember this because I did this inside part. Um, I, for some reason, due to technical difficulties, I had to use my finger. So it looks really weird. Uh, but I also got that fish bone in there and the, the beer bottle and a skull and some bones. So it's kind of creepy, but really fun. Um, so this one, we, we made this drawing. Let's make this a little bigger. Um, I did the octopus. And there's a bunny in there, some dust bunnies, and lots of cool things. Um, but we couldn't figure out, like, how's that relate to Little Red? So it's in Grandma's aquarium, <laughs> how it relates. Um, just one more of these, because these are kind of fun. Um, here's another one, Grandma. Grandma developed quite a personality, as you can see. <laughs> She's not your ordinary grandma. Um, here she is with her bonbons and a cigarette. <laughs> That was also drawn with my finger. Chuck's really good at drawing with his finger, um, but I need a lot of practice with it. So we, every drawing has to have the banana duct taped to the wall. Um, so going off of the shelf idea, there's the banana. Um, a refrigerator is a really fun thing to do because everyone wants to draw food, right? So I think I like to draw pickles because they're pretty easy to draw. And I think I drew this, maybe the melting soup. Yeah. And the lava lamp because Amy, I don't know, maybe you came in late and we needed lighting. <laughs> it's like, we need some light. But then you you came in and did the important light from glow from the refrigerator. Um, all right, oh, I, sh I should, um, let me see, this is too long. I just want to show you the find, some of the find it's. Um, Why don't you just show them all of us, show all of them, but you can go through them kind of quickly so we can I'm see them all. I'm talking too much, aren't I? Yeah. No, 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 we want to see them all, but you don't okay. have. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're not okay. talking too much. This is so great. Okay. We love so, it, we love it. Don't oh, stop. You. So the find it's, um, I came up with this idea because parents are having a hard time you know, they didn't know what to do with their kids home all day and so I thought well this uh, by making the find is I could send them to kids and they could work on them with uh, their siblings and um, here's some pictures of that happening and then they would send them me the pictures so I just was it was fun for me and I hope it was fun for the kids So, uh, yeah, that's too small. There we go. Here's one that was submitted by a child. Maybe it was an adult. Adults get into this too. Um, so I wanted them all to be black and white so that they wouldn't take up too much memory. People could print them out, then color them in, send them back to me if they wanted. Um, most of them started either on in uh, Tuesday, I guess in Tuesday art mostly. because uh, the people in Tuesday Art, uh, Jill, Jill is here from Tuesday Art. Um, we played that stapler game so much during the summer. It was really fun because people would say different words and then you knew when someone was like trying to like, all of a sudden there'd be like all these tropical words and someone's trying to make us do a tropical drawing and maybe we don't want to. So then someone says wig you know, <laughs> so, like, yeah. so here's, you can see where we start. I started with this module, then I uh, repeated it and rotated it for um, kids to play with and then more to color in. And then something for the little kids who maybe wanted a simple puzzle. So I sent this and then they, this is what they did. Aiden and Jasmine, they really got into coloring them. Um, so here's my take on paper dolls, kind of uh, uh, Edward, Edward Lear with, the, with um, the owl and the pussycat, and you could cut them out and then they could go in the boat, the rowboat. So 
So this one I didn't. I I, I wanted some kind of interaction with people. So I said, what what's the hidden meaning meaning of this? Uh, I didn't know, but Becca's mom Perla said it's all about the llama, and I thought, oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I'm trying to make it a little bigger because that you can see that like that's a higher resolution down there. So I played with it in Photoshop a little bit. Right. Stained glass. Um, so it, at this point, it's September and I was back at school and it was getting harder and harder to do these. So I did this one that it's kind of like a rotoscope look like tr tracing images off the internet. But I thought it was a little bit like color separation. So the kids could either print these out and then put them together on a window and make the unified drawing or the parents could print them one color over the other and then they could color them in. So here's, here's some familiar faces, right? Even little old ladies can do this. <laughs> the, for the young and young at heart. So, um, and then this is the last one. I think it's time to go back to school. Um, <laughs> so I, I think it's a good time to stop and, and, and let you ask some questions. I'm going to stop sharing for a little bit. So which, which, um, which students were these? Well, the, the those world. students were um, from Walnut Hill. I teach at Walnut Hill School for the Arts, which is a private boarding school for the arts. So all of the student work was from, from uh, Walnut Hill? Well, except for the jelly, the jelly prints. Yeah. prints. Those, were, um, those were taught online. <clears throat> so yeah. I, I have a question. The, mm -hmm. Because you said early that you were, it was getting harder to tell the difference between what was ugly and what was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I probably shouldn't question that because it works to my advantage. But <laughs> what I think is that is it that it doesn't matter so much anymore or that the line you don't have strict standards for ugly or beautiful or that the line is being crossed all the time um i think it doesn't matter to me uh, 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 so much anymore i'd rather have something be expressive and evocative than something that's beautiful or pretty you know but there is a kind of pleasing quality that has to do with design or, or art qualities, formal qualities that make it look good to me, but they're not necessarily about beauty. Stephanie, how long have you been an artist now? Hi, hi, Ara, it's hi. nice to see you. Um, well, I made my first book when I was about five. <laughs> there's a picture of uh, that my sister, one of my sisters saved, both of my sisters are here, hello, um, that was evidently a perfect circle that I drew when I was two or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, she was a prodigy. She was a child prodigy. So. And would you say, like, uh, what would you, what would be your recommendation for someone on the older side who always had an inclination towards art, but never really threw themselves out there? Well, art is the one thing that, well, there's other things too, I imagine, but um, it's the one thing that you can do at any age and you can be successful at it at any age. You can start at any age. Michelangelo, what was he? Um, Chuck probably knows how old was he? Like ninety eight or something? He was, he was in his nineties, anyways. Well, yeah. still... well, not when he started, right? <laughs> yeah, but when, 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 when he was still working. Yes, ninety, I think. Yeah, but we don't know how young they were when they started. Uh, he was probably about seven. <laughs> yeah. We have a question in the chat um, from Anne. Have you decided which of these experiments you might like to expand on? Mm, that's a good question. Um, well, I saw Ann's work, which had been put on a billboard in Kansas, and I thought, wow, I got to go big, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> um, that looked really great. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. I am just still experimenting. So. 
do you think the um, the pandemic has helped you be more experimental? Yes. And yes, for sure. Yeah. Just push the limits or take chances or just take chances. Um, why is that? I guess because I really thought long and hard at the beginning of the summer uh, after after teaching, and that was. Um, I don't know, that really built my confidence because I did something that was really hard um, and it was turned out to be really meaningful for the students. And I thought, I really just want to do things that are meaningful for me and for other people and to use art as a way to connect people, to bring people together, to share creativity. I mean, I, it might sound trite, but really those Tuesdays and Saturdays, I feel like they saved my life, just making art with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stephanie. Hi, Hi Stephanie. <laughs> I loved your talk. Thank you. Thank so you very much. The pieces that you think don't work or you're not really sure, do you ever think about collaborating with anybody? Well, I have, I have done some collaborations, um, probably not for a while. I'm trying to remember. Um, I did one with Chuck ages and ages ago. Um, and then... Um, I have done some, but I can't think of them right now. Yeah. Would That's you ever point, give though. away the pieces that don't work and see if somebody can do something to them and give them back to you? Yeah, actually, I, I kind of proposed that to the Tuesday group. I said, what if we sent postcards and, you know, to each other and, and worked on them? Uh, I still think it's a good idea. So maybe I'll just send out postcards to people and see what they do. Janet, okay. it sounds like you're volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, it's like a good challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's a really good idea, Jana. Thank you. Should I should I send you some postcards? Sure. Okay, good. I'm making a note. <laughs> I want a postcard too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's my here's my vow. Whoever attended here will get a postcard. <laughs> Stephanie, something that you um, that you just said about the pandemic making you braver um, or experimenting more in the early days, um, it just really resonated with me in the very early days, even for ATAC, thinking about programming and how we would make it through. I was lamenting to a group of friends, artist friends, and I was like, there are no rules. Like, there, there are no rules. I don't understand the expectations. And um, somebody just repeated that back to me, but with a happier voice. Oh, um, and it was very, <laughs> it was, it was really great um, to have that flipped on its head of like, oh, when there are no rules and no expectations, then you just have a lot more room to discover. Um, and it, it's nice to hear, it's nice to hear another artist applying that. And um, it's something I definitely, I would very much like to hold on to the muscle memory of that once we are, once we have moved through this time. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, what I, for me, I really wanted to separate my art, and this sounds very altruistic as well, from um, being something that was commercial. I wanted it to be much more about communication and and bringing people together and having a an interactive ac experience. So. Do you, I have another question, um, and everybody, I'm just going to remind everybody to go ahead and chime in the chat, um, get your questions in before we're, before our evening is through here. Um, when you, do you typically, um, do you exhibit books, and when you do, if you do, do you allow people to be able to manipulate them and, and go through them, or are they, um, are they only presented, you know, pristine? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a, a good question for artists. Uh, it's better if people can touch the books because that's why most book artists make books so that it's a tactile experience. But if too many people touch them, then they get damaged. <laughs> um, so I try to build in toughness for the, from the beginning, you know? Um, and there's also the little white gloves, which are, are actually hard to, <laughs> once you're wearing them, it's hard to play with the books. 
Um, but the good thing is that most of my books sold to museums and libraries. So they're in, uh, they're in a safe home and they're brought out and shown to students all the time. So a lot of people get to see them and a lot of people get to touch them in like a safe, in, in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. um, and we have another question uh, from Anastasia. Do you think the pandemic changed your students? Oh my gosh, yeah. It's been really, really hard on students, uh, especially adolescents. I teach adolescents um, because being social is just really an important thing for them. Um, it's funny because I, sometimes they'll really talk a lot in class and I like that. Um, although it's, it's kind of funny to be like, many, many of my students are, are Asian and they speak different languages. So I don't really know what they're talking about. And that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Um, when I'm in class and I can understand what they're saying, it's it's really it's so interesting. But I have to not participate, you know, because that's their thing. I want them to be able to talk freely as long as they're working. You know, they can they don't have to show themselves as long as they're working. They can talk, uh, but it sure it is interesting. <laughs> I I bet I have two teenagers and it is. It is really strange and inspiring to watch them navigate this and maddening. They're learning from home. It's, yeah. it's, I could thank you for all, <laughs> thank you for all the work you're doing for students because on the other end of it, good gravy. Yeah. Um, well, I am going to, um, I'm going to wrap it up now. I'm not seeing any other questions kind of come in, but say somebody had had a thought and they wanted to share it with you after this closes, how can how can people find you? Um, well, let's see, I should I put my, I can put my email in the chat. Okay. Um, and also my um, I can't think one I can't talk while I am typing so I'm writing out my website has this been taped Janelle yes this is um it will be on Facebook so it's recorded right onto Facebook and okay. it's at ATAC 160 or Amazing Things Art Center um and the videos will live right on there wonderful I would have forgotten yeah. And they can be shared, uh, and I encourage you to do that. And and truly, if um, if you have some time to spend, all of the talks are about an hour, and um, they they are all as lovely as this one has been. That's really I I am so grateful for the artists who have come on to this series, uh, including Stephanie. And Stephanie um, has put her email and her website in the chat, and I very much. Um, recommend you connecting if it sounds like you know quite a few of these folks so maybe they already know how to find you but for those of, of you who are watching in the future um, please reach out and check out her work. Stephanie thank you so much. Thanks for um, everyone. Thanks Janelle for hosting this and thanks for coming everybody. <laughs>